Recently, there's been a bunch of rumors floating around about a sequel to the Switch launching in 2024, from factory leaks to anonymous insiders to the worst mock-up I've ever seen. But things have been ramping up a lot recently, with Nintendo apparently showing the new console to game companies behind closed doors at events, and even showing graphics similar to current-gen consoles. What I want to do is take all the real rumors and use them to help create an accurate prediction for the Switch too. For the past four years, the biggest part of reports and leaks has been 4K support, and it seems Nintendo will be doing it in their own special way. Nintendo likes to keep things cheap, so rather than do all that heavy processing that a PS5 would do to make something 4K, it's going to use something called DLSS. Essentially, it runs the game in 1080p and then uses AI to upscale it to a much crisper image. This will be done thanks to the help of Nvidia, who actually make the chips for the current Switches. I can definitely see them being on good terms with Nintendo after the success of the Switch, so it makes sense that they would partner up again and this time create a custom chip for the Switch too. But Nintendo likes to give things a twist, so what if they use all of this AI upscaling for more than just games? Imagine you're watching a YouTube video, but your Wi-Fi is slow and the quality is bad, so the Switch uses DLSS to upscale it and make it look clearer. On top of this, the Switch 2 is also rumored to fully support Switch games, whether it be on a cartridge or downloaded using a Nintendo account. They could easily just use DLSS to make older games look better on the Switch 2, because some games really need it. But alongside these DLSS rumors are reports that the Switch 2 is going back to an LCD screen rather than OLED. Now, I've seen a bunch of people mad at this, but given how much display technology has improved since the original Switch, I think this could still look really good. And I have a feeling they'll finally make it 1080p as well. Again, they could run the games at a lower resolution and then use AI to upscale it to 1080p, which would increase the battery life and performance. And finally, the release date. According to Chinese tech outlet Money DJ, Nintendo's Chinese manufacturer is expecting to supply chips for a new Japanese game machine in 2024. Unless they're making a PlayStation 6, this is probably the Switch 2. What's more, they're even expecting the new Switch to launch in early 2024, which I 100% believe with like 60% certainty. I wouldn't put it past Nintendo to just copy what they did with the Switch 1 by revealing it in January with an awesome presentation, then releasing it in March. But that also sounds too soon. So if that doesn't happen, my prediction would be that they announce it in September or October, so it's out just in time for people to get it for Christmas. So we're good, right? We've gathered all the leaks and now we can finally predict the Switch 2. Hold on. There's more. Turns out Nintendo's been having secret meetings with game developers behind closed doors at events like Gamescom. And this is where it gets wild. Not only did they apparently show the Switch 2 running Breath of the Wild in 4K 60fps with virtually no loading times, they also showed it running the Matrix Awakens tech demo, something that was used to showcase the power of a PS5. On a Switch, it also featured ray tracing, which would make games have that really nice realistic lighting. So finally, this will be Mario in 2024. Nintendo can easily make something like this possible with all the tricks that they use. They make games that look like this on a thing that's less powerful than a phone. So just imagine what they could do with a rumored three times increase in power. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere, but you may be wondering why there are colored buttons on this concept. And no, I didn't just do that because it looks cool. Turns out multiple new and upcoming games are featuring color-coded buttons for seemingly no reason, and they line up exactly with the layout for the SNES and new 3DS. For one, I think this could hint at the naming of the Switch too, which we'll get to later, but it also makes perfect sense that it's in preparation for a new Switch. Think about it, both Nintendo consoles that had colored buttons were sequels, but it also has a practical purpose. Have you ever been playing with your friend who's using a Joy-Con on its side and had a conversation that goes like this? Press A. I am. No, press right. The right button. Oh. With colored buttons, things would be way simpler. Press red. Wow, that's so intuitive and convenient. Another benefit of colored buttons is that you can easily tell who is the new Switch and who's poor. So now this Switch 2 is slowly starting to reveal itself to us, but to truly be a sequel, we need to fix a few issues. Actually, a lot of issues. It's no secret that a lot of Nintendo fans hate Nintendo, whether it's because they don't discount their games or because they refuse to make very easy improvements to the Switch. It seems they never listen. But I think Nintendo is listening to fans, they're just saving all the improvements for the Switch too. Because... The Switch has a ton of flaws. The D-pad. Most controllers have a crosspad to input movements or commands, but the Switch has these. And hey, I get it. They want the controller to work on its side and playing with a plus just wouldn't work, but this makes it almost impossible to press diagonal inputs, and it just feels unnatural. But at least the other buttons are good, right? <laughs> the triggers. The triggers uh, trigger me. <laughs> The purpose of a trigger is to have something to pull, but Nintendo seems insistent on having clicky little buttons. Most other controllers have these analog triggers, which are pressure sensitive, 
But no, that's too much for Nintendo. It's not like they've used them before with the GameCube. Okay, fine. At least there isn't like this useless feature that's only been used for like three games. The IR scanner. This thing sucks. It has no purpose, except for a few games. And when it is used, it's for something trivial, like letting you eat air or scan your heartbeat. So, how do we fix these? The D-pad's pretty simple. It's just a matter of combining the best of both worlds, which is why I proposed the split pad. This keeps the design of the original cross pad, while still being four separate buttons for when it's used on its side. Paired with the different colors, I think this looks really cool. Adding pressure sensitive triggers would be cool, but we could take this even further. PlayStation copied HD Rumble from the Switch, so we're gonna copy them back and take their adaptive triggers. What's cool about these is that they change how the triggers feel depending on a game. They could feel like a gun in Splatoon, or have the resistance of a bow in Tears of the Kingdom. As for the- Sadie. As for the IR scanner, I'm replacing- Sadie! As for the IR scanner, I'm replacing that completely with speakers. These could act as extra speakers in handheld mode, and in TV mode could provide sound effects directly from the controller, much like on the Wii. It would also make sense to include a microphone, so you don't have to use headphones to talk to friends. On top of that, you could have it so the voice chat comes from the speakers in the controllers, and is split from the game audio coming from the TV. God, I'm good at this! Now let's turn our attention to the software. For starters, Nintendo's probably gonna try and get on our good side by finally giving us stuff like a better home screen with themes. Furthermore, they've actually told us some of their future plans. They've said that they'll be heavily investing in their online infrastructure while bridging the gap between generations. This would mean no longer having to buy the same game multiple times for each new console, and maybe renaming Switch Online to Nintendo Online or Nintendo Plus so it spans many generations. I'm just saying, if Nintendo keeps making movies and maybe TV shows, it'd be awesome to watch these on demand with a subscription. Improvements to Switch Online could include voice chat, parties, Spotify and Discord support, along with a bigger library for Virtual Console, hopefully featuring GameCube and Wii games eventually. But don't bring back Miiverse! That place was weird. There's a chance they also release a new app alongside this, and I'd love to use it to turn on my Switch, download updates, and buy new games, all from an app on my phone. And the final piece to the puzzle? The name. Nintendo's only made two sequels to their consoles, the Super Nintendo and the Wii U. The Wii U was a complete failure because no one knew what it was. It just sounded like an accessory for the Wii. They would have sold way more just by calling it the Wii 2. But Nintendo doesn't do that. Because that sounds boring. The Super Nintendo, on the other hand, works great. It makes it clear that it's a newer, more powerful console and fits the Nintendo branding. Hang on. Isn't the Switch 2 supposed to be a newer, more powerful console? And it's supposed to have the same coloured buttons as the SNES as well. Behold, the Super Nintendo Switch. Holy sh**, that looks sick. I... I feel like something's still missing. The fan favourite. The current dock is bulky and mostly empty space, so what if it did more? Let's start simple. Adding extra cartridge slots would let us access more games at once without having to constantly switch out your games. On top of that, it would also double as a safe space to store your games. Let's also stuff some extra hardware in there. The dock could give the Switch a power boost to make games run better when you're playing on a 4K TV and are more likely to be playing with multiple people. The Nintendo Twist. Every Nintendo console comes with a twist. The Wii had the Wii Remote, the Switch was a hybrid console, and the Wii U had a big clunky controller with a screen. But what if we could take that last one and make it better? With a wireless dock. It's simple in theory. You'd use your Switch as the controller, and then beam the video data to the dock, which then sends it to the TV. This would let you use the Switch as a second screen, to show things like game maps, voice chat, party, or anything really. On top of that, it would allow you to play DS games, with the Switch acting as the touchscreen. I think this could be a really cool twist, but it comes at the sacrifice of draining your battery a ton. You may have noticed that Nintendo has two different audiences, people who don't know where the A button is, and super cool epic gamers. For example, the casual gamer doesn't care too much about power and wants something cheap, whereas the hardcore fans want more stuff and are willing to pay more. I could see Nintendo releasing two variants of the Super Switch. They've done it a few times before anyway. The base model could come with the basics and be nice and cheap, while the Pro model could come with more storage, a bigger and better screen, a better dock and more power. But they wouldn't call it the Super Switch Pro. They'd probably call it the XL or something. So there we have it, a massive upgrade with much better performance, a completely new look, an interesting twist, and so much more. Come back to this video once the Switch 2 is out to see what I got right, and subscribe for more. Psst. Click here to find out how Mario Wonder secretly teased its sequel.